As much as we'd like to control every single aspect of a project, it's not always possible. In traditional project management, a lot of time is spent dealing with contingencies, reducing risks, and creating accurate time estimates. In an ideal world, you would have unlimited resources and all the time in the world to complete a project. In reality, resources are limited. The team deals with deadlines, and things can go awry. Let's see how Critical Chain Project Management, or CCPM for short, can help. As a project manager, you need to prepare for everything and expect anything. And that's where Critical Chain Project Management steps in. Critical Chain Optimizations let you know which estimates can be shortened and allow you to distribute work evenly. If you choose to implement CCPM, you can finish the tasks on time, or better yet, ahead of time. Critical Chain Project Management is another brainchild of Ilyahu Goldratt, the creator of the Theory of Constraints. He used critical path methodology, combined with the Theory of Constraints, to get a project management approach that accounts for resource availability. We put links to videos that cover both critical path and the Theory of Constraints on the screen and in the description, so you can go check them out. They offer a great foundation for better understanding of CCPM. Critical Chain helps you find the longest path in the network diagram, taking into consideration task dependencies and resource constraints. Unlike the critical path method, Critical Chain doesn't presume you have unlimited resources, as in reality, resources are often limited. It's really similar to the critical path method because it maps out the critical path necessary to bring the project to fruition but it also considers necessary resources and contingencies such as people, equipment, materials, etc. Plus, it has something that Critical Path does not have, buffers. There's a lot of uncertainty around projects and Critical Chain uses buffers to protect the project timeline and remove them. There are four types of buffers, project buffer, feeding buffer, resource buffer, and capacity buffer. To protect the project from missing a due date, a project buffer is inserted at the end of the project. It's usually inserted between the last week and the project completion date. Its duration will depend on the activities found in the critical chain. Another buffer is inserted where the non-critical chain meets the critical chain, the feeding buffer. It is inserted there to make sure that the non-critical chain does not compromise the completion date of the critical chain. When managing a project, it's crucial not to run out of appropriate resources. To make sure resources are available throughout the project, resource buffers are placed, which are also known as critical resources. And in case an unexpected budget issue arises, there's also a capacity buffer that makes sure that you have sufficient financial resources for managing the project and bringing it to its completion. In general, to implement the critical chain on an established critical path, you need to go through nine steps. Step one, cut down all time estimates by 50%. You'll still have the remaining 50% of estimates as buffers. The thinking behind this step is to address Perkinson's law, which states that work expands to fill the time allotted. By having the estimate, we change the dynamic of the estimate. Time is no longer abundant for each individual task, yet we have the buffer in the schedule as a contingency. Step two, identify and remove resource constraints that could put off the project deadline. Step three, at the end of the project, place a portion of the reduced time as a project buffer. Step four, consists of inserting a feeding buffer where the non-critical path and the critical path meet. Step five, place resource buffers to protect the critical chain. Step six, a project manager will insert the capacity buffers. Step seven prevents multitasking. And this is a stage where you should schedule tasks as late as possible. In step eight, the project manager encourages the team to start and finish the tasks on time in order to complete them as quickly as possible. And the final step, step nine, in this step, the project managers manage buffers and gain the necessary info for double-checking the plan and taking recovery actions if needed. When there are so many project management methodologies available, why should you choose the critical chain? Because of its ability to protect the project from unexpected events, critical chain project management is mainly used for projects that require a lot of resources and multi-project environments. But it can also be used on various projects regardless of their size or the size of the business or company. It's considered one of the most practical project management methodologies as it allows people to focus on one thing at a time. It also increases the team's productivity and efficiency and helps the team meet goals and deadlines without procrastinating, multitasking, or putting in the extra effort once the deadline starts looming. 
If you want your project done in minimal time, giving you maximum results, try using the critical chain. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel, watch our other videos, and let us know in the comments what video we should make next. Bye. Creator of the Theory of Constraints. <laughs> we put links to video. Oh. The critical. That could put the project at and watch our other. <laughs> <laughs>